Released in 2013 by Naughty Dog on the PlayStation 3 and later PlayStation 4, The Last of Us would be a cinematic stealth action game set in post-apocalypse America with survival horror elements. Directed by Bruce Straley and co-directed and written by Neil Druckmann, both of whom worked together on Uncharted 2 and would work together later on Uncharted 4, the game evolved from a reboot project for Jack and Daxter into a project Druckmann once pitched that would combine Eco with Night of the Living Dead and Sin City. For story, the game features a grizzled man in his late 40s named Joel, alongside a 14-year-old girl named Ellie, as they make a perilous trip across the country fighting zombies, survivors, and themselves. For gameplay, each chapter has the player crossing and climbing over obstacles, broken up by segments of combat primarily using cover and stealth to silently or loudly take out enemies. Weapons include firearms, melee weapons, improvised weapons like bottles or bricks, and weapons crafted on the fly like Molotov cocktails and smoke bombs. Equipment and weapons can be upgraded with found scrap and raw materials, and skills to improve performance and abilities can be purchased or enhanced with manuals. The game also features three online competitive multiplayer modes such as traditional deathmatch, deathmatch with no respawning, or capturing the enemy's lockbox. The story only gets larger from here so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. The game begins in late 2013 in Texas, where a tired father named Joel is gifted a watch by his daughter Sarah for his birthday, but that same night, Sarah is woken up by calls from her uncle Tommy as strange noises and sounds of chaos erupt outside. Joel dashes in, defending her from a neighbor that has turned violent due to infection from a recent outbreak as Tommy pulls up to help them escape the city. As infected quickly grow in number and ravage those who attempt to escape, the group is forced to now run on foot as Joel carries Sarah in his arms. When attempting to flee from encroaching infected, a soldier clears them out, but then receives orders to also shoot Joel and Sarah. As he fires, Tommy saves them, but not before Sarah is shot and dies quickly, devastating Joel. As 20 years pass, the pandemic has killed 60% of the world's population, as society breaks down, but some groups like the Fireflies fight to restore former government and order while opposing the current oppressive military control. We now meet a girl named Ellie who lives in a dorm in a military school in Boston, Massachusetts when her best friend Riley comes back after being gone for over a month. It turns out she's joined the Fireflies, led by Marlene, a woman who has raised Ellie since she was born and wanted her to stay safe in the school to begin with. The two girls sneak out to revisit an abandoned mall they've explored before, turning on the power, enjoying the attractions, and exchanging jokes out of a pun book. When they're ready to head back, Riley reveals she's being assigned far away starting tomorrow, and upset, the two discuss how they feel about it. After doing a few more activities together, Ellie sincerely asks Riley to stay, and Riley tears away her dog tags, choosing Ellie over the fireflies. Delighted, Ellie kisses her, and the feeling is mutual, but their moment is cut short as an infected spots them and attacks. More and more infected give chase after the two girls, and right when they are almost out, one zombie manages to bite both her and Riley in a struggle. Knowing they don't stand a chance, Riley says they can either kill themselves now or wait it out and go crazy together. Not a fan of either option, they agree to wait for the end together. Not too far, we now see Joel as a smuggler, working alongside a woman named Tess and operating within a quarantine zone also in Boston. One day, one of their associates, an arms dealer named Robert, sent some men to take out Tess, knowing they were out to get him too, and Joel joins her in finding him and settling things. A firefly bombing on their checkpoint forces them to take a detour, as they learn Marlene, the leader of the fireflies, has actually been asking around for Robert as well. Making their way out of the perimeter out into more reclaimed areas, the abundance of nature is also littered with those infected by a mutated cordyceps fungus, resulting in increasingly lethal stages and types of zombies. Killing Robert's hired men, they corner and beat down Robert, who explains he sold the guns he owed Tess and Joel to the Fireflies instead. Killing him for his betrayal, Tess is unsure how to get their weapons back from the Fireflies when Marlene herself walks out from around the corner clutching a wound. Tess explains Robert sold guns that weren't his, but Marlene refuses to simply hand them over, saying they can have the guns if they do a smuggling job for her. Before accepting any deal, Joel insists on verifying the merchandise, and so they follow Marlene, who brings them to Ellie, whom she needs smuggled to a crew of fireflies waiting at the Capitol building. As it turns out, Marlene knew and trusted Tommy, who told her she could rely on Joel even if he wasn't part of their cause. Tess stays with Marlene to verify the guns and get Marlene patched up while Joel watches over Ellie. Neither Ellie nor Joel are pleased with the arrangement as they move to a rendezvous point to wait for Tess, and along the way, Joel learns Marlene knew Ellie's mom and has been taking care of her for a while. That night, Tess arrives, assures Ellie Marlene will be fine, and confirms with Joel the deal is very good, and so they waste no time in moving out in the cover of night. Unfortunately, a security patrol catches them and proceeds to scan them for infection, but as he scans Ellie, she pushes back, giving Tess a chance to gun the guards down. 
However, they glimpse at the scan results and confront Elia on being infected, but she insists she was bitten three weeks ago, even though everyone turns within two days, so that should be impossible. They don't have time to argue as more security comes in, forcing them to move forward with the job, though when they get clear of danger, Tess presses again what the plan for Ellie was. Ellie shares Marlene told her that she was the key to finding a vaccine, and needed to go to doctors set up in their own quarantine zone, but scoffing, Joel doesn't buy that or trust Marlene. Tess is willing to believe and wants them to focus on the job as they spot the Capitol building, navigating past the blind but lethal clicker monsters and fighting the quick and erratic runners between them and their destination. Despite the danger, the abrasive Ellie is actually enjoying the time that she can enjoy being outside the city for the first time, which amuses Joel, even as she admits she cannot swim past the small bodies of water they encounter. Unfortunately, when they arrive at the Capitol building, they find the rendezvous team dead, and Tess scrambles to find where they were supposed to go in the first place. Joel notes the panic in her actions and questions why, forcing Tess to reveal that she was actually bitten in an encounter on the way here. Comparing it to Ellie's wound which is healed, hers is worsening quickly, lending more proof to the claim that Ellie really is the cure to this crisis. She throws their entire partnership against Joel in order to get him to agree to take Ellie to his brother Tommy, and as the military pulls up, she offers to buy them time to get started. Agreeing to let her die her way, Joel and Ellie escape out and into the spore-filled subways, where Joel notes Ellie truly is immune to the effects of the spore somehow. Forced to work together, Joel and Ellie navigate out of the flooded tunnels, though when they emerge, Joel sets no-nonsense rules to avoid future deaths, making it clear that if they are going to make it to a nearby town where his friend Bill can get them a car, then she needs to follow his every word. Passing through some woods, they get close to Bill's town and get more used to working with each other, as Ellie is in amazement at life before the quarantine. They see Bill still has his knack for placing traps around town, as well as displays of his expert archery. Finding one of Bill's bows about, Ellie offers to take it, revealing she actually knows how to use one and can help fight, but Joel doesn't trust her that much just yet. Just then, Joel gets snared by one of Bill's traps, and while fending off waves of infected, depends on Ellie to cut him down quickly. He is saved in time by Bill, who leads them to safety, but still isn't the most welcome to the duo. Joel cuts to the chase and intends to collect on the favors owed him, needing a working car from Bill. Bill says he doesn't have one on hand, but knows there are parts around the neighborhood that they can collect and he can fix one up. As they prepare to enter an area denser with infected, Bill warns Joel about getting attached to Ellie, as it will likely result in getting him killed, recommending he stick to watching out for himself. Their first destination is an overrun military convoy that crashed into a school, but when they arrive are shocked to find someone has already stripped the truck before them. Forced to escape into the narrow school hallways, Joel encounters and defeats an enemy deep in the infection stages called a bloater. Scrambling out, they find a house wherein Bill is surprised to find the hanged remains of his old partner, Frank, who was also the one to have stripped the same truck Bill was eyeing earlier. As it turns out, Frank already got a truck fixed up, but it'll need a push to recharge his drained battery. Putting a bit more faith into Ellie, Joel and Bill start pushing, getting the truck moving and escaping danger just in time. A ways away, Joel admits Ellie is doing a pretty good job for herself, which doesn't convince Bill, who still thinks she'll be the death of him, as both sides agree they're even and go their separate ways. Traveling smoothly now, they talk and bond as they approach Pittsburgh, but spotting a trap from a mile away, Joel tries to break through the bandits and wait. Unfortunately, the bandits manage to smash their truck, and the duo have to fight their way out of the ambush. They see the main bridge out of town, and along the way, Ellie tries to lighten the mood afterwards with some puns and jokes out of a book she has. Later, Joel is caught off guard by one bandit, but is saved by Ellie shooting him down, though she's upset that Joel isn't exactly grateful. Still, Joel finds he's going to have to trust her a little more in order for both of them to make it, helping teach her to shoot better and watch his back. Seeing the bandits here are better equipped thanks to overthrowing the military in the city, Joel and Ellie work around them, running into a young man named Henry and his little brother Sam. Henry attacks them at first, but backs off knowing they're not bandits since the bandits do not keep children around. Everyone except for Joel is quick to want to work together as Henry leads them to their hideout for now and shares they were planning on sneaking out of the city tonight and joins some fireflies in their base out west. That night, Joel's skepticism proves true as when they escape, during the first sign of trouble, Henry leaves Joel and Ellie behind in favor of protecting Sam, though Ellie states firmly she's sticking with Joel. Chased by the bandits, Joel and Ellie make it to the bridge but are forced to jump and despite getting knocked out, Henry and Sam end up spotting and saving them. Despite the recent friction, they continue working together, moving past the remnant of a fallen community that tried to survive in the sewers, and moving towards a radio tower where other survivors are supposed to meet up. Making their way through an old suburb reminds them of times long gone, but that piece is broken up by a resident sniper picking off other survivors. 
As Joel takes care of him and fends off more bandits, infected now swarm out and overrun the area, as the group breaks free and makes haste towards the radio tower. Taking a break to celebrate their victory over the bandits, Joel starts to loosen up and bond with everyone, but the next day, they are all shocked to see Sam was actually infected during the last attack and turned overnight. Henry does what he must and shoots his little brother, but in sudden grief and lacking his major motivation to go on, he quickly kills himself as well. Time passes and it's now fall, as the duo finally make it to Wyoming, where Tommy and his group are actually occupying a hydroelectric dam. Joel and Ellie are actually pretty comfortable with each other, with a natural and appreciated teamwork dynamic. They're stopped at the gate, but Tommy comes out to welcome them, letting them in, and introducing them to his new wife Maria, who leads the community. The brothers haven't seen each other in years, nor do they separate on the best of terms, but while talking, Tommy tries to make peace and even gives Joel a picture of him and Sarah, but Joel refuses to take it. When they talk, Joel reveals his mission is to deliver Ellie to the Fireflies, but so far hasn't found any members alive to do so. He knows Tommy knows of at least where they can be found, even if he's not a part of them anymore, and wants him to help deliver Ellie. Tommy doesn't mind supplying Joel, but now with his own family and new community to take care of, he refuses to accept the mission and risk of taking on Ellie. Old wounds between the brothers open up, but a bandit raid on the plant interrupts them. Seeing Joel help protect the plant and seeing his personal interaction with Ellie, Tommy reconsiders and agrees to at least lead them to the Fireflies. Sensing something off, Ellie takes a horse and rides out on her own, but when Joel catches up to her, she confronts him on abandoning her. Joel tries to explain he feels he's not as good a guardian for her as Tommy or the Fireflies, and Ellie calls him scared, revealing she knows about Sarah from Maria, and she's not her. Immediately riled, Joel says she doesn't know what real loss is, and Ellie counters that everyone she has ever cared about has either died or left her, except for Joel, admitting that if he leaves her too, she'll just be more scared. Ending the conversation, Joel agrees she isn't his daughter, and likewise, he isn't her dad, and they are going their separate ways. As they ride back, Tommy explains the Firefly Lab Ellie needs to go to is in the University of Eastern Colorado, and Joel surprises them that he's decided to make the journey himself after all. Tommy still offers to help, but when refused, still shares that Joel is welcome to return here anytime he wants to. As the duo rides out again, they arrive safely at the university, but find evidence that the group here packed up and went to a hospital in Salt Lake City, Utah. Instead, a group of bandits has moved in, and in the shootout, Joel is tackled off of a ledge, falling and getting impaled through the gut by some rebar. Ellie helps him up, and together the two shoot their way out, limp back to the horse, and escape, but things don't look too good for Joel. Finding a safe spot in a mall, Ellie does her best to patch him up but leaves to find something to stitch the wound with. She finds supplies in a crashed military helicopter and sees their attackers are still in pursuit as infected also prowl the mall. Pitting both sides against each other, she makes it back to Joel and puts her military first aid training to work, stitching him up and then transporting him somewhere safer. Time passes as winter sets in, as Ellie is still surviving on her own and while hunting for food, encounters two other survivors, David and James, who wish to trade for the meat she's got. Wary, she barters for medicine, and James goes to get some while David stays behind as leverage. Trying to make peace between them, Ellie and David are forced to work together as a horde of infected find and attack them. Defeating them, David is impressed by Ellie's combat prowess, and mentions how he's reminded of how he once sent out a group of men to look for supplies, and most of them were slaughtered by an old man and young girl, looking at her knowingly. As James returns with the medicine and a gun pulled on her, David says to let her go, and instead invites Ellie to join them, but she firmly refuses, taking the medicine and leaving the meat. Returning to Joel, still suffering from his wound, Ellie administers the antibiotics, but the next morning, she finds David's men successfully tracked her to the abandoned town they're hiding in. Determined to protect Joel, she attempts to draw them away, but they shoot down her horse, and on her own, she has to contend with a mob of bandits seeking revenge for the university fight. She puts up a valiant effort, but is captured all the same. Waking up, she is surprised to see the bandits here are also cannibals, though David serves her some deer meat. She comments on their savagery, but David counters Ellie and Joel are no different, choosing to kill scores of men and calling it survival when all they're doing is the same thing. David sees her strength and loyalty and wants to keep her alive, though the rest of the camp disagrees, and Ellie's defiance makes it hard for him to persuade her. Elsewhere, the medicine does the trick as Joel finally recovers and sees Ellie is gone. Seeing bandits around the town instead, he takes a few prisoner and torches information out of them to learn what he needs. Back with Ellie, David and the group decide Ellie is not worth the effort and so move to butcher her for meat, but before they do, she shows them that she's infected and would be no good, which distracts them long enough for her to escape into the snowstorm currently over the town. David catches up to Ellie and corners her, but in their struggle, they both get knocked out as the building they're in catches fire. 
Meanwhile, Joel is actually right outside the town, cutting through the bandits who are also searching for Ellie, finding her backpack and dead bodies about to be butchered. Ellie and David come to and struggle once more, but Ellie wins the fight, killing David with violent abandon. Walking in on this, Joel hugs Ellie and comforts her in the same manner he used to with Sarah, and walking away, the two opt to quickly leave his town. More time passes and it's spring again, as the duo finally arrives in Salt Lake City. Joel muses about teaching Ellie to play guitar one day, but Ellie is clearly distracted by their impending arrival. In awe from spotting some wild giraffes, Joel chooses to address the elephant in the room, telling Ellie they don't have to go to the hospital if she doesn't want to, offering to return to Tommy's. Ellie reaffirms that after all they've been through, they need to see this through. She then hands him the picture Tommy tried to give him of Sarah, and this time Joel accepts it, no longer rejecting his past. However, while crossing a rapid water flow in a tunnel, Ellie falls and almost drowns, and while Joel tries to resuscitate her, some soldiers approach and knock him out. When he comes to, he's greeted by Marlene, who welcomes him to the Fireflies, apologizing for her men not recognizing him. She's amazed they made it here on their own, since she's lost so many men getting here herself. He insists on seeing Ellie, but Marlene refuses, saying she's being prepped for surgery right now. As it turns out, the cordyceps inside her is somehow mutated, resulting in her becoming immune, and once they remove it, they can reverse engineer it to make a vaccine. Joel points out cordyceps grows on the brain, and Marlene grimly confirms that, and realizing what this means for Ellie, Joel objects. Marlene understands it's hard for him, but it's just as hard for her too, as she also promised to look after her and has raised her since she was a baby, but right now, the needs of the entire world matter more than just one person. Joel refuses to accept that, but tiredly, Marlene leaves, giving him one chance to leave with no fuss, saying that if he resists, they will kill him. Overwhelming the guard, Joel kills him and makes his decision to save Ellie. Killing dozens of fireflies on his own, he barges into the operating room, killing the doctors there too, and steals Ellie away. Making it to the parking lot, Marlene intercepts him at gunpoint, telling him he cannot save her on his own, especially since the world out there is so much worse. She also points out he's acting more for his own interests than hers, but once she lowers her guard, Joel shoots her, loads Ellie into a truck, and executes Marlene. As they drive away, Ellie wakes up as the drugs wear off, and Joel tells her they did indeed find the Fireflies, and wouldn't you know it, they actually have dozens of people just like her who are immune. He adds that despite that, they haven't created a vaccine, and so have actually stopped looking for a cure, and so they're going home. As they make it back to Tommy's community in Wyoming, Ellie looks at her wound in thought, and while walking back, Joel even begins openly talking about Sarah. Ellie opens up too, bringing up her friend Riley that was also bitten like she was in Boston, and while they had intended to die together, Ellie instead had to watch her die, just like Tess and Sam. Joel explains that he's had to deal with survivor's guilt too, and the way he's overcome it was to find something worth fighting for. Suddenly, Ellie confronts him on what's bothering her, demanding that he swear everything he told her about the Fireflies was true, because she will trust him. And without hesitation, Joel swears it to be true. The Last of Us has enjoyed the success of selling over 18 million copies worldwide.